Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to wherever you are in this ever-expanding now moment. Welcome to the Blu-ray Ascension Seed Show with your host, Natalie Alea. Hello, everybody. Myself, Bridget Rao. And today we have a special guest star, uh, Jody Griffin St. Ange from Blue Angel Healing in Carver, Mass. She's gonna Hi everyone, be, how are you? She's going to be discussing Theta Healing, um, clearing limiting beliefs, how Theta Healing works on all different levels. She's also a very avid uh, angel communicator and she can express how to pick up on the signs that your angels are giving to you, you know, the different vibrations that angels have. Um, she has direct communication with them every day, all the time, so she's the perfect person to talk to when you want to hear about the angels. Um, but Jody, did you want to give a little brief description into what Theta Healing is and how it works? Absolutely, Bridget. Um, I'm happy to. So Theta Healing is, was brought to us by a wonderful woman named Viana Steibel, and she is from Montana, uh, Montana, and she has a Theta Healing Institute of Knowledge now that has been, that was created in Idaho Falls and now has been moved back to Montana. But it is a revolutionary healing technique that works with the cells of your body and the creator consciousness through the theta brainwave. I am able to make changes on the cells on your behalf through the creator of all that is. So I become the witness and the creator does the healing. And our bodies are consisted, as we know, of millions of thousands of cells working together in concert to form the material body of your beautiful self. So within our body, we contain belief levels within ourselves. So we have a core belief, which is everything that you have learned from birth until now. We also have what we call genetic beliefs which are downloaded or essentially passed on through the cells at birth and as we're created in the womb from our parents, from our mom and dad, but also from our grandparents and our great-grandparents going back to seven generations of beliefs, as well as carrying history-level beliefs, which could be anything from a past life or an ancestor. So if there was a traumatic event that occurred within your ancestry, then your cells would remember that. Therefore, you would have triggers or limiting beliefs surrounding those particular topics of interest or specific situations. And then we carry things on a soul level, which are very deep ingrained beliefs, and those are the soul of who you are. So when we carry a belief that is on the soul level, we tend it's a big belief, and those ones tend to be a little bit more difficult to clear because you've had them for a lot longer, especially if they're coming on the history level um, and or genetic level. So the Theta Healing, so as a practitioner, uh, those that come to receive Theta Healing would sit across from me. Uh, we may hold hands or not. It's completely up to the person and where I'm located in the U.S. I can offer Theta Healing on phone sessions because it can be done long distance. I don't need to have you present. All I need is for you to agree to the changes. I use a process of Theta Healing where I reach the theta brainwave and I'm able to access through the creator I can scan your body ask creator to show me what beliefs you're carrying and it could be a belief that I don't like snow <laughs> and we could work on why you don't like snow and there could be a fear of snow and perhaps on your history level there was an ancestor who passed away during a snowstorm a blizzard or avalanche yeah. And there we would you work with Creator to conduct a soul retrieval. We would bring back the soul parts that were lost, clear away the trauma, and then download Creator's teaching and definition of what it feels like to live without carrying that. And therefore, after that healing, we always call that a miracle healing 
of any sort. Whenever we make a change in the body, it is always a miracle because these are deep ingrained beliefs that we have had that would not change otherwise without connecting to the Creator on the seventh plane. We could go through hundreds of years of cognitive therapy, including Reiki, to clear limiting beliefs, let's say anxieties and fears and triggers, and with one session of Theta, these beliefs can be cleared. I don't make I don't make assumptions saying that someone is going to have a total miraculous healing, but I have seen miracles occur with indiv individuals where they have carried beliefs towards having relations with other people who are unable to even communicate with another person um, who all of a sudden has the ability to do so. And this has happened through a number of sessions we work on similar issues releasing fears and as we clear them people become more confident more in line with their divine purpose and they feel more alive inside and more more grounded into mother earth and it is no longer do they carry those triggers so each person is different every healing is unique as we all carry different belief systems in our body that react differently to those um, situations. I, I really like how uh, you can use Theta to help manifest abundance. Like I, I've noticed uh, it, it works so much quicker when we do that. Yes. And and yeah. that's like, do you can you tell people like what some of their limiting beliefs would be surrounding getting abundance? Well, there, believe it or not, um, you know, there is a there are lots of blockages within abundance. It could be, you know, money is the root of all evil. That's a belief that many of us carry. Also, worthiness beliefs where I am not worthy to receive that could be created through just coming into this world and maybe you live in, in poverty, you grew up in poverty and it's difficult to come out of that. You might carry a vow of poverty. So some people, especially if someone has a loved one that let's say was a priest or a nun or if they have had past life regression and they have had uh, an experience where in a lifetime they were a nun, they may carry that vow of poverty and by having that they are unable to carry and hold on to money. Right. It's it's And it's really cool and I, I was kind of like, eh, about it when, you know, I didn't expect it to be so powerful, but like we did the manifesting abundance class and within like two days, stuff that I was asking for was showing up. It, you know, Jamie brought home a brand new vacuum and one of the things I had asked for was new appliances. So it, mm -hmm. it was so cool to see it manifest so fast and, uh, and I was asking for simple things. I wasn't asking for like, you know, the moon and the stars, but for it to happen quickly it was really cool. Yeah, it, it's really amazing how fast things can start coming in when you're in alignment to receive. Also, other beliefs preventing one from receiving abundance um, would be beliefs surrounding resentments, anger, holding grudges onto other people, situations, jobs from the past. That is also a block to receiving abundance and financial stability. I like that it also works, um, I was talking to someone last night who's done Theta with you, and the weight loss, uh, they were able to go from being in a, in a position where they were unable to to do a healthy diet or to change, and, and you know, now they've dropped like what, like 45 pounds in, in a short amount of time, mm -hmm. and it's just, those are the types of things that people, I, like, it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem like it could happen, but I know firsthand because I'm seeing these people transform. Yeah, it, it, that's amazing, and I know who you're talking about there. And how amazing was it that it was almost it was almost immediate after her session that that person was able to really shift and start being more in alignment to what um, was good for her, and you know. Like I said, everybody has different beliefs, so it just so happened that we had set our intention ahead of time, and she did as well, and I do believe that that has a lot to do with it, is that her mindset was ready to make these changes, because I've had some individuals that come in, and they want to do 
work on weight loss or abundance or love, okay, like bringing in their soulmate, okay, their most compatible soulmate. And they, if they are not willing to do the work and make the changes, um, then they're not able to actually bring in that high vibration to come in for that change to happen. Well, that's what happened with me that night about paying past um, bills in debt. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. We, we had to stop. But she was like, okay, I don't want that. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, I have to go around that. And I'm hoping eventually she'll be ready to clear that. You know, and I always tell people, you know, if they instantly say, oh, well, I can't do this or I can't do that. And I, I look at them and I say, that's a limiting belief. Would you like to clear that? Because it can be changed. And yeah. anything can be changed in our mind. Anything at all. And I've had amazing experiences with the Theta. I, it blows my mind every time. It's I even had a woman that came in for a session and she has asthma um, or asthma-related symptoms. And even though she goes to the doctors and they've gone through all of their testing and she has all these inhalers that never or changes and she really does it comes up inconclusive that she has asthma so we went through a healing package where she this woman came in to see me weekly or bi-weekly and we're working and we're working and as I'm going up to create her all of a sudden I was seeing you know her past life and how she had passed and at the age now this is the thing that was so amazing to me the age that she had passed in that previous life was the age that she in this life started picking up those symptoms. Ha, oh, wow. really? Right. And when we cleared that, her asthma disappeared. How and, did she pass? Um, it was a traumatic ending. She was crushed. Okay, so she couldn't breathe. And it was like a board. Um, I was having visions, and I asked Creator to show her and show me. And I kept on seeing a board with boulders being um, pressed on her and in and crushed. And, and so she was like crushed to asthma. death. Yeah, she's an asthma. Like asthma. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And I totally believe that because I've seen it, you know, time and time again, people. Uh, I think John Doonan had said something to me about my... Um, the sciatic pain that I had, that it was caused from past life, and the age that it started showing up here was yes. the age it was when I had whatever killed me in that life come. Exactly. So, it sounds really shamanic to me, you know, that it's kind of like a shamanic type of, because uh, you're going into almost sounds like the Akashic Records. Yes, exactly. We are. We're going and into the Akashic retrieval. Records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and on different levels, it sounds like when you were talking about the soul, the history, that's uh, really interesting. So you're going on different levels of the Akashic records, and you said something about the miracle healing. The Buddhists say that uh, any time we heal something, we could have had thousands of lifetimes with that unhealed. Mm -hmm. So it is a yes. miracle <laughs> when yes. we heal it. <laughs> it as simple as it is, it is, it's a slight change and people don't realize it. It's such a simple shift within the cells that it's profound. Just like with yeah. the woman that had come in for weight loss and, and, and we had done one session, that was a miracle healing. I've had, I've had a young girl come in with eating issues and then all of a sudden things disappear. I've had so yes. many things come yeah. in and I just, I'm completely humbled at the power of creator and at the power of theta healing. I've been a healer for many years and I've been facilitating hands-on since I was four years old and facilitating Reiki since 1996 and I've never stopped hands-on. So for me to be able to make these type of changes for my for the clients that are coming in and it's not me and I have to constantly correct myself because I want to make sure that people understand that I am the witness and the vessel creator shows me where it is then I on their behalf ask tell creator to change this for them it comes in so powerful and unique so what one person might be experiencing for one particular healing or a miracle healing as we call it another person with the same belief system is going to experience something completely different yeah the witness thing too. see like you said creator comes in and shows you when I go on a shamanic journey the power animal 
shows me. But it's the same thing, just like a different. It's almost like a, like a fractal level. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And I and I am able to through that theta brainwave. I'm able to communicate with spirits as well, mm -hmm. our loved ones that have crossed over, our own ancestors, the animals that come through. I've had totems come through. It's it's just all in that yeah. encompassing. Set what, of plane. Explain the theta waves. Is this like the alpha, beta, theta? Is it, I think the theta waves are the shamanic, maybe it's not, the meditative brain waves, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like when we're alpha, we're awake, you right. know, and you go into beta and we are in that half point, you know, when a yeah. lot of healers are able to reach beta state, that's meditation, that's daydreaming. When you're hitting theta brain wave, where it's deep in our subconscious mind, and as you know, being a shamanic healer, you're able to what theta what they call theta healing is we're not listening to sounds though to bring this theta healing where Yeah, you're not listening to the drum or the rattle. Yeah. Right. This is just able to go up into that theta brain wave to reach that state of consciousness, still being aware and present. And then That's having beautiful. to make that change. So we go through, um, like I almost do my own, I, I do a little guided journey with my client whenever I begin this process. And I think it allows me to prepare as well, really letting go and meditating and just allowing myself to be centered in the heart of Mother Earth, pulling in that energy. And we always ground to the heart of Mother Earth. And then we ask to be guided, you know, past the white lights, the dark lights, the white lights. We go through the many levels of consciousness. Of the the veils or whatever they call them, yeah. Yeah, we call it seven. We call them levels of consciousness. So you can have, you know, level one of consciousness or, um, or planes of existence. So like plane, the first plane would be everything is like, would be rocks and the yeah, earth. The crystal and consciousness. I call right. it, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Chris, then the second plane is um, plants and animals. Third plane is mm -hmm. where we are right now. Fourth plane is our ancestors, our loved ones. Fifth plane is all of our gods and goddesses, the uh, ascended masters, the angels. Believe it or not, our gods, like our Hindu gods, are on fifth plane. Sixth plane is all of the laws, like all of everything that has to do with just gravity, you know, right. the, the universal the energies, quantum. Exactly. exactly, and seventh plane is where the creator of all that is is, and that's essentially where we go to make these changes, and we don't even consciously know that, and they say that that is where Master Jesus was able to connect to the seventh plane of the creator consciousness, um, to make those changes for total miraculous healing on all of these people, which is which is pretty cool. And I'm and no he means always it. said or claimed, at least when I re when I was going to church and stuff, that Jesus said that you know others would do this and more. Mm -hmm. What he was doing, so yeah, I've always you know he he never said it's only me who can do this. <laughs> I know. You know? Oh, I know, but like, you know, there's all, we have, you know, um, and I'm not downplaying anything, you know, like, they have their beliefs, and um, mm. some people, you know, that they would say that I would be blasphemous for saying that. Yeah, and I don't get that. He wished humanity to have these healing abilities, I think. I agree, and um, he himself said, you know, the kingdom of God is inside you, and it's all around mm. you. It's not built of mansions of wood and stone. They're, mm. they're here. It is here within us. You lift a piece of wood. It, you pick up a rock and you're going to find creator. You, you split a piece of wood and I am there. Mm, like, that's beautiful. It, it's, it's, it's in every living, breathing, and non-living thing. And if we're, he was able, I mean, he did his teachings on top, on top of a mound, you know, uh, uh, under a tree. And um, there, at that time, there was no churches and things like that. So there is a lot of controversy. But I tell people, I pray directly to, to Jesus. Like, when, when I'm beginning, I go right up to Creator. I ask to be a vessel. And I ask that any angels or spirit guides who would like to work with me to do so. And I work with Native American spirit guides. And I have, I've had different Hindu gods come in for specific mm -hmm. healing because that's the person needed and yep. it was 
about my ego. It's just about being that vessel of light. And I think that's why I love Theta because, again, it's not about religion. It's not about views. It's just about connecting and making that conscious connection to the creator of all that is and saying, okay, creator, we need this done for this person right now. And miracles happen. And if it's in their divine purpose to not receive that healing because they're not open to it, then it's, it still has to be okay because that's their journey on this world and their earth plane. Like that's their, their spirit journey here. So I just, every day I'm just blown away and amazed at Theta. When did you, uh, when did you start doing Theta healing? Jody. Um, I want to say it was 2012, 2013, about that that time. Mm -hmm. I had heard about Theta many years ago, and even one of my mentors kind of was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's just like Reiki, and so I felt that it was a little bit, uh, you know, people didn't really think of it in the same terms that I'm thinking of it right now, so I, it was almost poo-pooed to me, mm. and so... When I was searching for more and searching for more and searching for more, I kept on being drawn back to Theta, and I would ignore that feeling. Hello, I should have listened. <laughs> and um, so, because Vienna was actively doing this in 1995, so I mean, it was out there in the beginning of my career, and um, then it came to my knowledge about. It was probably about 2000. Not 2008, 2009, I had a friend of mine, his name is Jim Wazalewski, and he's an advanced theta healer and a health coach of mine, and we were working together doing Reiki, he's a Reiki practitioner, and he kept on hearing from the creator that he needed to work with me, and he kept on saying it, Jody, I, I don't even, I don't know how we're going to do this, and I know that, from, you know, you know, we'll barter if we have to, and I was like, okay, so we bartered for sessions, and he practiced theta healing on me and I couldn't believe how it made me feel releasing resentments that I didn't even know were there yeah Fears. I mean I was afraid of dogs I couldn't even be near a dog now I can be near a dog and I can walk down a path and not have a panic attack with the dog coming near me if there's a dog even on a leash I would go oh my gosh you know and I would be afraid of getting bit by a dog because I had a belief that I was you know I would get bit by dogs and that was a limiting belief and that was a phobia and Theta Healing healed that for me and I couldn't believe that so he connected to me with my teacher Pamela who's from Massachusetts but now is in St. Petersburg Florida and Pamela Lord, and she's fantastic, and she's really, she's good friends with Viana, and I feel very much so that, like, I was gifted to her, like, to be connected to her, the creator wanted me to learn, and I haven't stopped since. That's great. It's completely integrated into my healing programs now, so my clients who come to see me for Reiki also have an opportunity to experience Theta, and every single one of them get hooked on Theta. Because it's just like, can we just do Theta today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to get on the table? No, 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 we'll just do Theta. That's okay, because they're feeling the difference. And Reiki is wonderful, and I always infuse Reiki at the end of my sessions because it just is such a, it makes you feel so warm and cozy, and it makes mm. you feel you so surrender. gentle. It's just yeah. Reiki is like this, like gentle hug and kiss or something, right. you know. And so, you know, I, I just I do my hands on with them at the end of our session. So we'll do an hour of theta healing. We'll take a five minute break and then come over to the table, and then they'll get some hands on, and it just they they say they they leave like butter. <laughs> it is cool, and um. I like I like the uh, the muscle testing because it, it's like it it shows you how to uh, like even how to do things in regular life. Like I do that as a way to f figure out if something's the best for me. Like if I'm stuck between two decisions, like I did it with um, the blankets I was buying the other day. I'm like, which one do I want more? <laughs> <laughs> so like in the middle of store muscle testing. <laughs> How do you do the muscle? Do you do with the fingers with the muscle testing? Just pull your fingers. Yeah, I I don't do it with the fingers. I actually use the body as a pendulum. So I I will have 
um, my the people that come to see me, the participants or the clients rather, would stand facing north. I have them close their eyes so that they're connecting to their subconscious, mm-hmm. and I zip up their energy and I'll tell them to say that you know their legs are about you know hip width apart, sock them in the knees. We'll say yes, the body should fall forward, and then no, the body will kind of pull back. And they always tell them if you need to step forward or back, please do so, don't fall, because. <laughs> Wonder sometimes, like no, no, no. You want to make sure you can step. Don't fall. Don't fall down. So, um, so that's how I muscle test. Unless somebody cannot stand, that is the only time I use the hands because I still feel that sometimes, maybe even with the hands, that they might be able to manipulate that a little bit with intention when they're closing their eyes and they're zipping up. The the wow factor is what gets me every time because they'll say, "I don't carry that belief." I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, we'll believe. We'll we'll check on that." <laughs> And I'll have them check a belief, you know, um, like it could be any belief at all, like love is, yes. And if they say, and they would be like, oh, yeah, I carry that belief and go, love is, yes, on all levels, and they'll go, no. And they're like, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> or even just them moving forward. It, it, it's always wonder. It's such a, it's such a, they're like, oh, I won't move. Oh, okay. And I have them drink plenty of water because it's important that they're well hydrated. Um, if you're dehydrated, your body is not going to muscle test appropriately. So oh, I didn't yeah, know that. If sometimes, you're yeah, sometimes people go opposite too. They need to be rebalanced, right? Yeah, they have their poles are their like polarities off. So if I would say if I muscle test and I said say yes and they went back then their polarity is off so I would ask if you know do I have your permission to change your polarity and I go up I access the you know the theta brainwave go up to the seventh plane say creator change this you know and I I'll put my hand on their head and I do this thing and I flip it and it flips every time <laughs> and they all go wow like if I have a group and I'm, I'm doing a demonstration about what is theta healing I always say do we have a Vanna White here do we have a Vanna and you know when I bring somebody up and I, I like to choose somebody who's never had theta before because those are the ones because you know that the rest of the group knows they've not, I've never seen them in our groups before so you know she has no idea what muscle testing is I usually ask have you ever had muscle testing oh mm-hmm. no okay perfect you know, and they're like, perfect. And even if I, when I'm muscle testing, if something's yes or no, I always say perfect because it's exactly what we need to see. And it always blows my mind because the belief is always there, no matter what. Even creator downloads it, it just gets in my head and shows me where the belief is. And I say, okay, and we muscle test. And even if they say yes on, you know, I carry, I'm afraid of dogs, and they say no. I go, let's check on all levels. And there might be one belief level that carries the yes. Yeah. And you just want to clear it out on all levels. Because they, I guess they can ripple. Do they, like, let's say, how does that work? If it's on one level, it does it ripple down into, you know, the, the level that they're on, their physical reality? It must. Oh, it absolutely does. Anything mm-hmm. that is. Um, a limiting belief if you are carrying that even on one level even if you muscle test and you are muscle testing that you don't carry that belief unless you check all of your levels you're not going to get an accurate reading that's really interesting because I do a lot of muscle like I do a thing with what we call it kinesiology over here in Ireland the mm-hmm. muscle testing and you can do it like with your like your thumb and forefinger and you kind of hook them in, it, together like you know yes. hook around and then just ask a question and whether you can pull your fingers apart or hold it right. so that I do that like I, do, I bought my car that way <laughs> is this car good for me yes yeah I'll take it <laughs> and, uh, and that's something that I want to actually Natalie learn how to do more because I have about one or two clients that are not that steady on their feet so I will have them do that muscle testing, but I'm not familiar with that muscle testing. So sometimes I feel insecure, which is a limiting mm-hmm. belief. And I, <laughs> I'll work on myself. Well, let me clear that belief before we work on that. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I have done that where I, I will literally go, oh, I, I hope I don't carry that belief. And sometimes I check myself if I carry a belief. And I'll go, hold on one second. And I just check, especially if it's with a friend. Um, or I'll just check for myself later. And I muscle test myself constantly for limiting beliefs. Do I carry this? Do I, I carry that? And I, I just, oh, I do? Oh, well, I don't want to carry that. So I go right up. I mm. imagine sitting right in front of myself. Yeah, I mean, it's a great way to self-heal because that's how also we can teach, like besides our lives getting better, it, it, we, we become better, whatever, for help, better able to help others then. Yes. As, as we clear them. And what limiting belief do you think um, blocks people the most? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Um worthiness that's a huge yeah, it's a big one um you know fear of they have there's actually believe it or not a lot of people carry resentments and grudges um and the worthiness piece like they're not worthy to receive god's love believe it or not um that those are the beliefs i work on first um I am able to receive healing from the Creator on the seventh plane. If you don't carry that, you're not open to receiving it. So I could do all this work for no reason. and um, It wouldn't be for no reason, but we wouldn't be getting anywhere unless they right. carried those beliefs that they were open to receiving. But worthiness is a huge factor. Also, um, open to receive love is another one that's huge. Um, and, and, and that can be for abundance. That can be for love. That can be you know a, a, your new job. If yeah. you're not open receiving love I mean because love comes from a job so you know and then you end up feeling joyful and happy so everybody is different but in my experience so far I would say the worthiness piece is huge but the beliefs are everywhere and I I, I, I just laugh at how many people still carry them I go to a place in uh, around the corner from us from us, it's a 55 plus community. I love doing theater on the on the little old ladies there, mm -hmm. and, and they're so wonderful. And they come in, and they're so they're so open. And we'll work on communication. Now, you'd think at 75 years old, they'd learn how to communicate. No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, it, and no, yeah, we'll work on communication. Now, thinking this is easy. And then we work on it, and then they're all needing to have private sessions. I'm like, well, we could clear. Let me just clear this, and I'll come over here, and and I'll check on what level, and and then I'll clear that for them. And because my theta healing demonstrations, I generally do downloads. I don't make too many changes. Like I'll change for the group, but um, from yes to no, like a belief. Mm -hmm. um, like when it rains, it's cold. That could be a limiting belief. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would change that because sometimes it is cold when it rains, but um, you know you would change that for the whole entire group, and sometimes it won't stick. So I one person might stand out, and that that didn't change. So I have to then muscle test: is it safe for that to change? And sometimes people don't; it's not safe to. And then you have to go in and you have to do a technique like called digging. That's what we call digging, and. Um, those are fun sessions. So where I have to sit there and, and, okay, well, if you had that belief, what would the worst thing be if you had that? What would the worst thing be if you had a million dollars? Sometimes people carry illnesses or having their limiting beliefs which protect them, and their illness actually protects them, and there's a purpose. So it's you have to really dig to get down to the core belief level. And without doing that, we can make all of these changes surrounding this core belief level, but that core belief is going to still hook, line, and sinker all of these mm -hmm. I, I I find that a lot with a lot of things, with the hooks. Yes. Energetically, that like, you know, and, and as you do more of this work, you start to see the hooks. When they're coming at you, no, go away. <laughs> yes. I've noticed that um, a lot of times it, it can just be in the wording, uh, how, how it's worded to someone. Like, there, there'll be, like, a little loophole, and, and they're, like, it, you know what I mean? Like, there's just, like, a little loophole in the way that it's worded to them. So they, they may go forward or they may go backwards depending on that little. It's like being, it's almost like being a lawyer. You have to, like, word it just so to get to their belief. 
Mm. Yes. But I find that I, I I do tarot reading, and you probably, I don't know if you guys do the same, but mm -hmm. I will ask a question three or four different ways just to make sure to see yeah. it. Because like with the wording, it's like, am I getting the wording right? Like, what do I really mean? <laughs> yes, yes. And, and that happens too with Theta. If I receive mm. a book, maybe I only hear half of it. Um, like I did a belief on a woman today, uh, or I hate saying woman or man, but I'm just going to call them all women, even though I do work on some men. But like, so I did a belief work today and um, about divine guidance, and there was a belief, you know, she might have carried, I, I am open to divine guidance, yes, but then if you said, I am open to my divine guidance, it would be no. Just adding. Ooh. That. Yeah, sneaky so one. Mhm. Mm and that's like another hook. Mhm. Mm <laughs> yeah. It's true too, though, because even in readings, like you know, I, I pull out cards for a woman the other day, and like I laid them all out in front of her, and I give her this reading, and and she wasn't really like resonating. So then I had to go deeper, and I'm like, okay, so by the end of it, it was like exactly what the cards had said, but I needed to like dig down into her brain for her, like, I think one of them was like, you know, you, there's no limits, like, you you can do anything you want to do, um, and then the next one was like, are you going back and forth on a, on an idea right now, like, you're trying to make a decision, and she's like, no, and I'm like, okay, and I'm like, are you a nurse, and she's like, yeah, and I'm like, have you ever, have, like, are you good in your career, have you thought about going anywhere, she's like, well, I've thought about going back to school, but it's not possible, and I'm like, Yes, it is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even think of it as something going back and forth. She didn't even see it as like a decision. But she once tried. I had said that to her, she was like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, she, it, it was on, it, and it was what I had been telling her from the beginning, but she didn't see mm -hmm. it that way, so I actually like, made it like into the, the fine details of her life. Right. Yeah, sometimes people don't see the structure of their own, again, like with the blind spot. That, yeah. And that's limiting belief, that blind spot that she has. No, I can't. It's not possible. And, I, you know, and Bridget, you know me. I would turn around and go, well, would you like to change that belief? <laughs> right. <laughs> Anything is possible, but some people are so wrapped up in their limiting belief that it prevents them from receiving everything that they need to. The change that they want. They're screaming to the universe, angels, help me, creator, help me, I need this, I need this, I need that, and then there's an opportunity, and they go, oh, well, I can't do that, well, why? I know, it's crazy. And there's I, no reason, there's uh -uh. no reason, I was like, so why can't you, and she's like, I don't know, I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 I'm like, well, they're telling you you can, and to go forward, and, you know, I'm like, ultimately, it's your decision, but they're giving you that push. They're telling you to make a decision whether or not you want to go forward and go back to school, or whether or not you want to stay home and be a stay-at-home mom. They're telling you to make up your mind and do it with all your heart, because you can do whatever you want, and she was like, oh, okay, and, like, she, I think it, it helped her to realize, like, there's nothing there holding you back. And, like, if you want to go back to school and then later on in life have kids, you can do that, too. You can do whatever yep. the hell you want to do. Mm. I think we need outside forces sometimes to assist us in in acknowledging that, like, we're not stuck in this, like, like you're, what are you going to do? Stay in this one position forever and never go back to school and never have kids because you can't make up your mind between what one's the best one? And, like, eventually you're going to have to choose. Mm. Right. Here's the thing, Bridget, even with those individuals that are coming in for readings, that are seeking for guidance, that are so deep ingrained in their stuff, right, that they're not able to see, they're exactly where they need to be. Right. And they're coming to us for guidance, but they, it's all limiting beliefs. Everything that prevents a person from stepping out into their own, okay, and being their assertive, confident self, um is all limiting beliefs. And then sometimes you don't know by having a conversation with a person coming in for a reading that, well, maybe their husband at home, who and they say, oh, well, my husband controls me, or I can't do this because of X, Y, and Z, and I'm not allowed to spend money. Well, essentially, they could be so much really, in, they could really be enjoying their life that even though they hate it, they're receiving everything that they need to, including additional attention, 
like if they have an illness that they don't ever get better and and maybe the illness is always being shown as not really being there um, I, I've treated clients that they go for all of these testings and they have all these aches and they're, and they're on all this medication and then they get mad at the doctors and it's this constant whirlwind but at the same time they're receiving Social Security, they have mass health, they have all these things. Now, if they healed their body, they're not going to get Social Security. They're going to have to get a job. They're not going to be able to get all of these things. And so that's where you have to kind of take a step back. And that's where Theta comes in. And, and, and I can see, Creator will show me that. That right. they're, just, they're not able to make those changes. And so I have to deliver that, you know, when I'm working with them, saying, you know, well, when you're ready to make those changes, that'll come in. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed with myself lately, um, I've had a pattern throughout throughout my life, and I'm, I'm starting to see my patterns more now um, and, and accepting them and, and working with them because... I do tend to like do like that thing with like you know oh Jamie this oh Jamie that like my fiance like I, I put I place a lot of blame onto him as to why I'm not going to be able to do something or why I shouldn't do something, but it's it may not even be him it may be my own guilt like he doesn't even have to say anything and I I'm thinking that he's good sometimes he doesn't even give a shit mm. and I'm thinking he's gonna be mad. <laughs> Like Saturday night, I was like, I I want to go out to eat, but it, what I didn't think that he like would be okay with that. So he called him, and he's like, Yeah, whatever. And when I came home, he was laying in bed, like, How was it? Did you make money? Like, and I was expecting him to be upset in a bad mood, but he has also shifted too since I've been doing more stuff. He's gotten more used That's to. That's cool. That happens. That's actually more common than you realize. I tell a lot of my clients that too when they're coming in and we're working on beliefs surrounding relationships and love. And when we begin to change ourselves and realign yeah. with our divine purpose, the people that we're in begin to change because we want to attract in a different vibration. Right. And they, you can't, if you change, the other person interacting with you can't help but change. That's right. And if right. they choose not to change, that's okay too. And mm. that's where you have a lot of, um, you know, people that are in relationships where one has to, you know, the relationships end. And it's not that the other person's necessarily a bad person. It's just that they've evolved and the other person hasn't. So they don't carry the same beliefs anymore. And they really don't want to live that type of lifestyle. Yeah. It, 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 it's bad or indifferent. It's just, it just doesn't resonate any further. It makes it makes it a lot easier for you, like, um, it, looking at things from this perspective has helped me a lot, too, like, to look at things from that point of view as to, like, there's not so much of a blame game in life anymore for me. It's, it's like everybody has their shit, and everybody's doing something because of something else, and it's, it, 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 we take things so personally all the time, and there's just no reason to. Mm. Absolutely. I... I just something sparked for me there, but I don't know if I can gather my thoughts to get to say it correctly, but um, the limiting beliefs, like the fear of the future, like I, I see with some clients, I see this stuff where they, they have to understand how something is going to come about. Yes. And I don't understand that, but like, it's like, why don't you, you know, just set the intention and like the energy or the cards are saying yeah it'll happen don't worry how it does because sometimes when they know how it comes about they'll self-sabotage anyway that's right and that's again that's another limiting belief it's like fear of the future or something or and uh, yeah and I don't get why people want have to understand the whole process right well, yeah, if, if they're an Aquarian like me, they want to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know every detail. <laughs> I want to know everything I need to analyze it in my brain until I get it, and so I understand it. And, and some mm -hmm. people are like, they don't want they want, but why? Yeah. But why? <laughs> Though there is such the energy so, to, like, today and yesterday, my gosh, so many downloads coming in. I don't know if you guys felt that, but... <laughs> Me and Bridget were talking earlier about it. It was like our brains were like, blah, 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 you know, just going really fast. Lots of information coming in. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Yeah, there was a lot of animals today. A lot of animal messages coming in. Did you want to share? I think it's kind of nice. Oh, some of the animals. The turtle. I love the turtle. And then you got the turtle clan card. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was cool. Um, the turtle thing made sense because, um, you know, I've been so busy and it's all about, like, kind of slowing down and, and grounding. And, mm -hmm. you know, the turtle carries the weight of the world on its back. And in different cultures, they would say that, you know, he's holding, um, you know, the earth on his back. Uh -huh. and, and I can see how that's relating because I haven't been giving myself a lot of off time. Like, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, oh, you know, I have this day off and I have that. But I'm not even really taking those days off. I'm taking those days off from being out of the house from still working from within. Mm. And I, I need a day to just sit around and do absolutely nothing. Be but a dog with your dogs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bridget. I'm uh, so mad, too. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Um, I had, talking about animals, I had Hawk come to me yesterday, um, well, not nice. yesterday, um, and I was walking, you know, in my yard, and I'm always looking, I always find feathers everywhere, which is, like, great, and I'm like, oh, and we having all these downloads, and, you know, um, it was a full moon, and all of a sudden I look, and I find, and I'm like, what is that? And it was a handful a cluster, like, of downy feathers from a hawk. Oh, precious. And so I pick them up, and they're all together, and it literally fits in the palm of my hand, this huge cluster of feathers. And so we had a drum circle the other day, and, you know, when I was telling the group, like, you know, when I find down feathers... To me, spirit is telling me a need to protect the self. And where I saw it, it was like a whole chunk. I received that I'm like little bits of myself have been being pecked away at by what's going on in my personal life, like little things that's like peck, 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 mm. peeling, peeling. And I'm shedding and molting. And I felt, oh, so I'm molting, which talks about my transformation, like the phoenix even rising up out of the ashes. So I looked at that as that I need to protect myself more and surround myself more by loved ones, but also to give myself that opportunity to heal. Because mm. I've been going through a death in the family, and we had a lot of shift over the last few weeks. Yeah, you did. And up to the eclipse and the full moon. So, And the energy of the eclipse and the full moon, to me, with the blood moon, was all about transformation because it's mm -hmm. the moon and everybody. There's so much suspicion around the blood moon, but yet it's a very powerful moon. And how I Yeah, I did the astrology, and I think we talked about this last week, and I, I got the uh, message that the Akashic Records were really opening up Mm -hmm. during the blood moon and that we were doing a whole bunch of clearing soul contracts which is limit you know like limiting beliefs in a way totally related that's oh, yeah. the message I got that we were clearing up able to read our our uh, Akashic records that have been hidden now, you know that from a uh, maybe not even hidden but maybe not accessible right and they're that's accessible now yeah, oh, no, they definitely are. And that's a lot of these people are talking about, oh, I thought we were supposed to ascend. We're ascending. We're ascending. And um, like, isn't your life magical? Because mine is. magical. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah. think that's some of it is that people, like, you know, are so eager to get off this planet and, and mm. be out of the But yet we need to be a, a, a mentor of mine said online, and I know Bridget saw this post, you know, um, be now. Be okay with being yeah. right now and loving that and being in that vibration of love and not so much that why are we not ascending. Maybe the ascension is that we're activating or becoming more conscious and being able to have access now to the Akashic Records. Yeah. Having to communicate more with our, our, our loved ones on the other side, with being open to receiving more divine healing from the universe and the creator of all that is. Isn't that ascension? I, I think mean, it is, yeah. So everyone's thinking that we're going to have this big mass, you know, vaporization, and we're all going to ascend at once, and I'm thinking, and I'm looking at them going, no, it's not <laughs> that. It's, gonna be, it's subtle, it's gentle, we're ascending. So 
I mean, we used to be able to communicate telepathically with every creature on the planet and, and with Creator um, and our ancestors. So I think this is part of the awakening that's coming is mm -hmm. that we're awakening to it again. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, there could be physical changes, but physical is always going to be slower. Yes. Um, but, you know, the unseen changes... Those those are happening at light speed now, you know, in the other dimensions or whatever you want to call it, higher dimensions. Yes. Information that's all happening really, really quick. But um, the, the things are happening quicker on the physical, but it's still way, way slower. Yeah, I mean, it, this is going to take a long time. Mm, yeah. And what what it is people like? I I just we we have talked about this uh, on a few shows. People want to vaporize or they want to like you know leave this place. I used to feel that way too, and I think a lot of star seeds do. But yes. in the last few years, I'm like, no, I'm here. This is my home now. I know I came from other places, but this is my home, and I'm gonna make it you know the best home ever. <laughs> And that's what we're supposed to be learning here is about mm. learning to be in that vibration of love, learning to love our life. Yeah. Whatever it is right now. Mm. Right now. And that's where we need to be. So much of us, so many are uh, focusing on the future. You know, what if this, what if that, or they're stuck in the past and they're unable to be now. Be now is where it needs to be. Right, B? Right. Um, <laughs> it's funny because it's like... Um, I was I was saying I've said this to a few people like recently too because I used to feel the same way like I didn't want to be here I just wanted to go mm. home and I was it all the time and actually a year ago to today, um, you know how Facebook tells you your memories I had <laughs> I had posted like I just want to go home and people were like what do you like my sister thought like it meant like I wanted to go back to my mother's house but it it was you know I I didn't want to be here. Um, but they're just going to make you come back. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a meme, th th reincarnating, I'll be right back, and don't touch my stuff. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I'm good now. Uh, I'm at a much better place now mm. in my, you know, in my head and, and through doing different work and through meeting other, you know, a big part of it was meeting other people who felt the same way made me feel better because I didn't feel so alienated and alone on the planet anymore. Like, I've got mm -hmm. stars coming out of the freaking woodwork trying to talk to me and I'm like, oh my God, where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> Like all day Sunday, um, you know, I was like, I was walking through the tables. Uh, Jody was at one, and and uh, KJ's at one, and they're both like stopping me. They're like, I gotta talk, I gotta talk to you. This girl needs to talk to you. And like girls were coming in that um, had seen post or someone had told them that they had to have a healing with me. But almost every single one had, you know, like star being energies. There, it, it's just like it was like amplified up. But even you know, the groups is where it had started for me on Facebook, because I didn't know any, like, Karen was one of the first people that I met that was openly like, oh, yeah, I'm a, st like, you know, I knew was a starseed and mm. was able to connect with, but now it's like almost every other person I meet is 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 like that or, or can relate to that in some way. You don't have to be a starseed to feel that way, but... And did you feel there was strong, because when I looked at the astrology, now this is from Ireland, because I did like an astrology map of the planets from, well, I guess you could say the northern hemisphere, and Polaris, Pleiades, and Orion were all constellations in the sky, that there were no planets in that section of the sky. So I figured Orion, uh, Pleiades, and Polaris energy was coming really strong over the weekend. <laughs> You know what's funny? Um, the person that was working at the table next to me was like, I'm from Orion, and like that that energy was like insane all day long, and yeah. it was it, it, it was very, very, very intense, and almost every girl that I talked to had like a Pleiadian um, message or something to mm -hmm. it, and Pleiadians have been talking to me. <laughs> I'm a Pleiadian. <laughs> I yeah. was right there. I just, I, I'm fascinated by Polaris recently because, you know, our North Star does change over like, well, it takes like 250,000 years or whatever, but 
right now it's Polaris, but I don't hear much about it, but I connect a lot with Polaris for some reason, energetically. i just fascinated by it. It's that's one of the first ones I usually see. I see Polaris. I always see Orion's belt. Mm, um, I, I, later on in the night, now I'm I see like I'll go out at three o'clock in the morning and the Pleiades is right above my head. Oh, but yeah. It's it's like they call you out there, and I also have the ships that come. Yeah, yeah. the little light buddies. Yeah, I, I've always been connected to the Pleiades, so as long as I could remember, I would stand outside and, and Orion's belt. Like I, I never was taught what was Orion's belt or, or all of these certain constellations and these stars. And I would say, oh, you see that right there? That's the Pleiades. And they would go, go what? I'm like, right there. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> it's like, like seven stars, I think. I'm like, I don't know. You can kind of see it. You can count them all. They're all like right there. And they're like looking at me like, how do you even know this? Did you take astronomy? I'm like, no, I just I just know that that's where that is. And that's why I know that I'm from there. So. And that's, that's what I've told people too because I, I know what the Pleiades are and I, I can find them. And I can actually see more than seven stars. And some people can't even see the full seven. But um, I used to wonder why I looked at Orion all the time. I'm like, why do I always look at Orion? And then it hit me one day. Well, if I was located in the eye of Taurus, I would have been looking at Orion in all those lives. So yeah. I think that's why we connect to Orion so much too, because you know he's right there trying to shoot us. What's <laughs> 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 so funny? And the guy that was with uh, next to you during um, the fair it was definitely from Orion. He's so a star seed. It's just too funny. I was just. I even felt like even that Leslie has star seed in her. You know. Um, I know that we didn't get a chance to dabble with that with, Le with Leslie, but she definitely is. I felt like we were all like in like that one corner. <laughs> yes, you, and you know it was funny because I had the, I had gone to get a little um, break, and he came out with me, and so we're sitting there, and I'm like, "So where are you originally from?" And he's like, "Orion," and I just love that he knew what I was asking, yeah. not being like, "Oh, I'm <laughs> from like Fall River." You're like, lucky. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you know what I mean? Like for you to sit down with someone and say, "Where are you originally from?" and they give you a star, you're you're you know you're with the right people. Mm. Right. Definitely. And, you, you know, I just wanted to ask you, too, let, could we talk about some angel stuff, too? Sure. I would love to talk about the angels. Yeah. Uh, so tell us your story about your work with the angels or anything that, you know, something with your work with the angels, your connection with them. Oh, I have been working with angels my entire life. I My first memories of the angels was when I was four. Wow. <laughs> Um, we lived at, believe it or not, 44 McCuska Drive, and we were in Braintree. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? I was at 44. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I was on the top bunk, and I remember vividly having an experience where all of a sudden I felt the bed move, like somebody stepping on the bed. And I turned around and I opened my eyes and above me hovering was this magnificent being of light with ribbons of light that would stream down and she would and I knew it was feminine and she would gently touch my face and and she was so bright she was brighter than anything I've ever seen in my life mm-hmm um, yeah, I saw an angel too, and it was the same. The light off them, I couldn't even. I could almost not even keep my eyes open. It was so bright. Right, and they. She touched me on my third eye, and she placed um, a symbol or something in my third eye, and wow. closing my eyes. And at four, I I even knew. Um, you know, I would pray to the Blessed Mother. <laughs> so. <laughs> Closed my eyes at four years old, and I started doing "Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee." Blessed are the among women. Blessed are the fruit of thy womb. Now at the hour of our death, Amen. And I'd open my eyes, and I go, "Hail Mary, full of grace," and I close my eyes again, and I would say it again and again and again and again and again, and, and she never left. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so shortly after that experience, I started astral traveling, and I was being brought up 
and I was way up and I could see my whole complex and that was my building and I was shown like the silver cord and that I was traveling with them and that I had a purpose and they showed me so many things through the creator's eyes and I, I can't even describe to you everything because it was so vast and profound and then after that I was probably five to six and I was still having visions of the angels coming to me and I remember we had this big huge hill and we had big wheels and you know we would play tag and everything and the kids would get a boo-boo and I would go running over and I would be facilitating hands-on healing and they would say to me oh look at the little girl oh do you want to be a doctor and I would say <laughs> and oh do you want to be a nurse and I'd say no I just want to do this and the angels always had me doing hands-on and I never knew what that was and so fast forward now many years okay so I'm in my early 20s now and um, I had had so many experiences that you know just going here talking to them I, I would talk to Metatron constantly I love Metatron. I, I actually think he's my favorite angel. <laughs> he's the highest order of all angels who stands mm. next to the God, and he's actually the only angel in the, within the heavenly hierarchy who is allowed to sit next to Creator. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Now I've yeah. always had a, a strong connection. Yeah. He sits because he's the scribe. Okay, and yes. Scribes down all of the Word of God. And that's why he carries the book of God, like the the book of life, and um, he, you know, within it has all um, mysteries. And if you read the keys of Enoch, and which is one of the books that I I have, um, do you have the keys of Enoch? I do. I have the. Keys. I need to get a copy of that book, by the way. So maybe I'll exchange information. I know you can order it from. Ordered it online. It was like seventy dollars. Yeah, it's expensive. Is it? Did you just order it online? Did you just order from Amazon or from the? There's like a Keys of Enoch site, isn't there? Cheaper on Amazon because if somebody's selling their old copy, okay, I got it from the main website. But it needs to be a white book, and it has the flames, and it shows the pyramid at the top, and and the symbol uh, because the, uh, yeah I, I find like I'm fascinated with that book but go on we'll, we'll talk we'll have to talk more about this later Jody <laughs> the keys of Enoch oh, for that but um, yeah I'm trying to come to me and then I remember we were living in, in Carver and uh, which is near my studio and I was up late one night and I had been doing some healing work and I was journaling in my book and um, all of a sudden I like started squeezing the book, my, my journal, and I started writing, and I was writing faster and faster and faster, and I just started writing about my experience, like, oh my God, somebody's here, I can feel something, and I changed, I started changing letters from E's to A's, from I's to O's to U's, and things like that, and so everything was shifting, and so finally, I just took a minute to ground, center, into Mother Earth, ask Creator for help, called on Archangel Michael, and I said, who am I communicating with here, and I wrote, Harold, and so I thought, Harold, Harold, is this from my friend Harry? Because my friend Harry had passed over when he was 22 mm -hmm. years, years previous. And I heard no, and all of a sudden I could hear the song Hark the Herald Angel Sing. And I started to cry and sob because I knew at that moment I'm communicating with angels. And, wow. um, yeah, and they've really come in. Actually, tonight I have my my communicating with angels certificate class where I do a communication course mm -hmm. where I teach to communicate with the angels. It was completely created by the angels and they get downloads from the angels to awaken their psychic senses so that they're more connected to them to receive their divine guidance and their healing um, and the messages to be delivered to the world because it's really important with all of us raising our vibration with this ascension that is happening um, mm -hmm from 3D up into 4 and then 5, which I do believe we're almost in 4D, but um, even though we're still very physical, and I believe we'll still be very physical for a long, long, long time, like we were saying earlier today, yeah. 
angels really need to communicate with us and people need to hear messages from the angels and I deliver what I call a soul reading and I know that it's because it's the angels are coming in and I'm, I'm like this is what's going on with you creator wants to make this change the angels are here they're sharing this so they've been coming through for a long time and I do spirit drawings of the angels as well and um, I, I finally realized after many years of you know and I've read tarot and my aunt is an mm -hmm. astrologer National Astrology Association of America. My family is from England and Ireland. Myself, like we're from over there, and um, so the Druids too. You'd be very much in tune with the Druid, which is all about the stars, and it's yep. just, it's, it's amazing. Um, and they just continue to communicate. But the angels, they are so here. They every one of us has a guardian angel. It's whether or not we choose to connect with them. That, it, that allows them to really be present and to help us and they're not going to make changes for us without our permission because we have free will and um, a lot of people don't realize that and they say well why is my angel not talking to me well maybe you're blocking it or maybe you're you're you know you're just blocking yourself from receiving what you need to and right. sometimes we don't always like what we have to hear you know mm -hmm. that's the truth <laughs> our own ego you know when we learn to step put ego aside and to step into the place of unconditional love non-judgment the angels come in and I've had experiences with I remember one experience this will blow your mind and um, so I was sitting and we were in Carver at the time and I was communicating with a girl online and all of a sudden I started channeling and um, my hands start to type really, really fast, and it was going faster and faster and faster and faster. And, I mean, I felt like I was typing like 150 words a minute. And I closed my eyes because it was such a high vibration. And um, I felt like I could hear him corporally. Like, he was so powerful, and I felt like I was in a pool of water. You know, when you're yelling underwater, and you're like, hey, and it's like, hey, wait, 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 wait. So... <laughs> And, I, and this energy comes in, and I was like, who are, I command you in the name of, 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 of the creator of all that is, I, I commanded it, <laughs> to tell me who you are. Because at first, he was like, it does not matter who I am. It matters. The message is what matters. And I was like, absolutely not. You're not stepping into my physical body without permission. I'm not allowing that. So you need to tell me who you are first. And all of a sudden sudden and I thought I was gonna like lose myself like I, I, I cried after but I am of the air and of the earth I am of the water which quenches your thirst I am of the fire I am Nathaniel so powerful so wow. strong I, I was like oh my god okay <laughs> and then I had a bookcase behind me and out flying out of my bookcase was angels A to Z and it was down, and I picked up the book, and I flipped it over, and it was on Nathaniel, Angel of Fire, who is a seraphim, and that's why he's a fire. And the seraphim angels are, the, you know, on the top of the angelic hierarchy. They're of pure blue, uh, pure flame. Metatron is a, um, is a seraphim. Um, Eli uh, Sandalfin is a seraphim. Michael uh, is also seraphim. Uriel is seraphim. There's a lot of angels that we communicate who are archangels that are also seraphim. So generally, we don't communicate with seraphim angels because we would die upon fright if we would actually connect with them in their... Okay, and I have a question for you. So I had a, a visit. One of the triggers to my um, awakening was I saw an angel. Mm -hmm. it, I was asleep and I woke up. Uh, full moon. We didn't have curtains in the house. We just moved into the house, so it wasn't like, you know, finished. Mm -hmm. And I saw light sparkles. It almost looked like something like Star Trek, you know, when they move in the thing. I just saw, like, lights flicking, like, in a circle. Yes. And then it popped up, and it was so bright. And it was like a, a blonde little baby <laughs> is what it looked like. But I knew it was an angel. I just saw, like, a face and a gown. Even the gown glowed. Yes. And I wondered if it was like a cherub. You, you know how they have the cherubims that look like the little blonde babies that you see like in frescoes? Um, cherubim or cherubim angels are not little babies. They are cherubim angels are in the, uh, I want to say they're in the first sphere 
Okay, so they are cosmic angels. Um, you know the Sphinx in Egypt? Mm -hmm. Half man, half lion. That's a cherubim. Cherubim angels are ha are very animal like. Um, they can have animal. They can have lion heads and human bodies. I I, I really in my research um, have connected with them, and they do have more of that energy. Another cherubim angel that we're very familiar with. Ariel is cherubim, and she comes through. Now she also is an angel of love. She's an angel of nature. Yeah, this this angel was like really. I didn't get the animal, but uh, it does make sense. Well, it, and it might be that the angel was really just appearing to you in a form, in a form. yeah, by you that you wouldn't feel fearful of, because they are not. They are not here to scare us. So to appear is in like part animal, part human form. I mean, some of it, I feel that the angels are really just electric. They're um, yeah. collective energetic energy of vibration. So they can, When sometimes when I have visions of angels, I just see the energy of the angel all dancing around them, like the tiny molecules all together, working together in concert. And they're all dancing around, forming this form of the angelic presence with the wings and the halo and the head mm -hmm. and the gut. And sometimes I've seen them come to me um, as looking very human. This one looked like human. I didn't see wings, but its skin glowed, its hair glowed, it was light coming out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, but I didn't see wings, and it was just for a few seconds. And the next day, I was, I was living in Ireland. I'd lived here about four years, I think. And I saw, a, let's say, a sheet on a storefront saying, connect with your guardian angel. And I, that's how I, start, I took that class, and that's how I started. Oh, so I was like, I saw my, I saw an angel. I'm already connected, but I'll learn, you know, because I was so fascinated. Because I was like, at the time, I woke up my ex, and I was like, oh my god. And he's like, oh, you were dreaming, but I was sitting up in bed, right, with my eyes wide open. Yeah, that's not a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, that's definitely an angel. I would say and you so. Said cherubim or cherubim, cherubim. Cherubim. Yeah. Um, I it, I wouldn't say that it was a cherubim unless I it was like you got a name I could tell you. Yeah, I didn't. I just saw it, and it just and I just felt pure love from this being. Um, I'm feeling really strongly that that was your guardian angel. Okay. Mm hmm. The guardian angels are the closest to humans. They are the ones that are making themselves known. They are always seen in apparition. They're the ones that we get pictures of. Mm. Uh, but, you know, so when, and they're lower in the angelic hierarchy. When we talk about the nine choirs of angels, at the top you have the principalities, you have the seraphim, okay, and then you know, and you have like then you have the cherubim, the thrones, the virtues. So you're moving all the way down the la the ladder, and then at the bottom, okay, on the very bottom is angels. Above them are the archangels. The archangels are the leaders, so that's why they appear to us, like Archangel Michael. He right. Awesome, but he is all angel, so he has the ability to kind of like a human-like form. Um, our angels that we are, our, our guardian angels that are like watching over us, and everybody has one. Those ones look a lot like human. Um, I think that Creator formed them to be that way. They're the, the heavenly messengers that we really communicate with because um, that's where they are. Because if mm -hmm. you're talking to them on a regular basis, you know, um, they have, they're working on the cosmos. They're galactic. Yeah. So they don't have time, and I'm not being saying this like. I totally agree with you. To, to <laughs> they don't have time. They're working on cosmic level. Working with the Arcturians, they're working on the galaxy, um, and that's why I think the Egyptians, like when people are reading, like when you're learning about angels, I mean, think about it. Like Isis had wings. Hello, they were communicating with angels and also with our our um, galactic brothers and sisters who helped to create us. Um, I mean, we have this consciousness. I mean, come on, we weren't, we didn't just go from like Neanderthal and Cro-Magnum to Homo erectus in just one day, but yeah, it kind of appeared that way, didn't it? And yet it was still Cro-Magnum, there was still Neanderthal, and yet all of a sudden we are like these very conscious beings that come to this planet, and the angels are here as our guides. 
So, I'm um, sorry to add a galactic piece there. <laughs> <laughs> I really believe that the, a lot of the energies within um, those were like you know part of the um, the angels that we communicate with are like are, are written about in all all forms of culture. They're written about in the Egyptian times. It goes back all the way to the time of Babylonian, you know. And they yeah. And sometimes they come in with wings, and sometimes they don't. But the common yeah, that's why I wasn't sure what I saw. Uh, well, and then I saw the angel thing, but like I was like, I thought angels were supposed to have wings, <laughs> but this definitely didn't have wings. But it was a light being. Yeah, they're a light being, um, and they don't always have to appear to have wings. Even though I have seen angels with and without wings. Okay. So, yeah, because Archangel Michael has come to me in his pure and and he's the only angel that showed me himself in his pure self. Or almost as, and he was a blue flame. He was electric blue. Oh, it was like beautiful. And his face formed, and I, I'll never forget it. I was very aware, and I could see him with my eyes closed and my eyes open. He was hovering over my body in my bed, and we lived in Carver at the time. And um, I, I'll never forget that and how he appeared. I wasn't afraid, but I had the first time I saw him. I saw him in black jeans and a white t-shirt and a black leather jacket and black boots and dark hair, but his eyes so spoke to me, and it was like he just talked to me through his eyes, which are of crystal electric blue eyes. So when he came to me as this being of blue flame, all I remember was his eyes, and then it, he panned out and showed me himself. I wasn't afraid. I was familiar with him at that point. So he's shown me two different versions of him. I have a painting that I did of him. Um, and he is. He's all blue and he's got like whitish hair. And some people say he looks like he's Pleiadian. Maybe. It sounds Pleiadian. I've seen blue beings before in dreams that were protecting me and stuff like that. So, And I, I still don't, I can't decide if they're Andromedan or Pleiadian, <laughs> where they came from, but they're definitely star beings. Yeah, and like I, my when I astral travel, like I found out that I was blue, and that's like kind of like the pun with Blue Angel Healing. Ah. Um, <laughs> I know. So I mean, I work with the Blue Angels, but and the Blue Rays, but um, I had astral traveled um one night, and we used to ha we had this fireplace with this huge old fashioned mirror. And I remember specifically, and I flew in front of my mirror, and I was like, oh, wee, and I'm flying in my house. And I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm going, I'm leaving the planet, I'm going to another part of the planet, because I do that at night, I astral travel to mm. the side of the world, I usually will go over to you guys. Um, not necessarily, um, you know, over an island, but I usually go over to, you know, like Iran or Afghanistan or something mm. like that. I have a lot of visions of being over there, um, and that's another talk for another day. But um, yeah, I flew in front of the mirror and I saw myself. I was blue. I was ele I was blue, electric that's blue. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I oh always my think I my over soul or whatever is blue. I think so too. I think I've seen myself as a blue being. Yeah, and I looked. I looked at my hands, and my my hands were electric blue. And I went, I'm blue, and I did <laughs> my body. Because it freaked me out. Like, I was like, oh my god, I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue. Like, <laughs> I really was blue. So, guys, I think, uh, are we going to uh, wrap this up soon? Bridget? Yeah. You have to get going, too. Because I have yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we should, um, you know, plan to continue and maybe just have an uh, angel. Uh, talk the next time. Yeah, because it we cut. I I think we should have another one where it's just angels, actually. Yeah, because there's was so much information there, and so much more. You know. Yeah, they yeah. really. I, and I love sharing about the angels. So. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's Blue Angel here on on the line, so. Um. Jody, do you want to let everybody know where people can find you, like yeah, you're on Facebook and where you're located and some of your oh, I'm, you can find me on Facebook or my you know my my business name or is Jody Griffin Saint Orange. Griffin's actually my maiden name. My name is um, but I do have that up there for people that don't know Griffin. And um, but I'm Jody Griffin Saint Orange. But you can also find me on Blue Angel Healing 
um, at facebook.com. Um, you can also go to www. Uh, help me, Bridget. Blue Angel here. Healing slash blue. <laughs> it's it's under Wix. It's blueangelhealing.wix.com slash blue. We'll put a link up. We're going to link it so you don't have to, like people yeah. will. Um, and I'm so grateful for Bridget because she, she really helps me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bridget's a for. star. Definitely a star. <laughs> uh, Natalie, you want to let people know where to find you? Yep, you can find me at uh, alayahealingservices.com and Starseed Shaman on Facebook and Google+, Alea Healing on Twitter, and uh, we have the Blue Ray Ascension Seeds show page on Facebook and Google+, and YouTube channel with Bridget. Right. And you can find me on my personal page, Bridget Rao. Um, I have my own page, Divine Essentials, New Paradigm Healing, and I am also located in Carver. I am Jody's assistant, and if you need to get in touch with her, you can't. You can ask me, and I'm usually able to do that for her. She has a lot of awesome classes coming up. She has uh, some mediumship things going on, and I know we're going to be talking to her again in the future, but as these events get closer like the Harvest Moon Fair and things like that, we'll be uh, discussing what's going on and all the new fun stuff that's coming up. But I just want to thank Jody for taking the time to talk to us today, and I hope that we can do this again in the future. Thank you so much, Bridget. Thank you so much, Natalie. It was so wonderful, Natalie, getting a chance to, to talk to you in person or via phone. Yeah. No, and fabulous. Thank you for coming on. So much information there. Thank you. Oh. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, have a wonderful evening and shine on. You too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.